This is the Netgear Nighthawk XR1000 Pro Gaming Wi-Fi 6 router. Yes, Wi-Fi 6, that's the latest Wi-Fi technology. Now, this router can achieve theoretical speeds of up to 5.4 gigabits per second. It also has four one gigabyte ethernet ports and a very handy USB 3.0 port, which is perfect for network attached storage. Now, don't be fooled by the gaming tag that it's only for pro gamers and gaming enthusiasts alike. No, this could quite easily be the perfect router for guaranteeing you have a stable connection for your next Zoom meeting and for you to forever drop the nickname Buffer Barry. Because this router can guarantee you have the majority of your internet bandwidth and keep it that way, even if your kids come home from school and try to do what they always do and steal your hard paid for broadband. And that's all thanks to the exclusive Dumas OS 3.0 software that this router has in its arsenal. Now you can not only guarantee the bandwidth for your Zoom meetings, but also allocate exactly how much bandwidth each device on your network will get. So no more devices using the majority of your internet. Is this thing on? Are we live? So let's have a little look at the Duma OS software. Now at the moment, uh, you can see that this is for the XR1000 gaming router. You can see at the top there. And, uh, and this is everything by default. So I haven't really changed anything on this. This is basically how, uh, once you set it up, I'll go through a few questions, uh, very straightforward. And then once you've done that, uh, this is what you'll be greeted with. Now, how you get to this page is 192.168.1.1. You have to create an admin password and everything like that. Very, very straightforward. So as we can see a few things here, we've got internet, status. Uh, we've got a wireless status, which I haven't got enabled at the moment. Wireless guest, wireless sta status, I should say. Uh, and then we've got some wireless status here, which basically shows that I've got two networks set up at the moment, 2.4 and 5. They're enabled. Name's Blue Thunder, Blue Thunder 5G. And we've got a password. And the security mode, which is the latest one, WPA3. Now, if you're on WPA2, and you're using an iPhone on the latest software, you might get a little error message when you go into your Wi-Fi that says unsecured network. And that's just because it wants you to connect to a WP3 network. Anyway, so this is all the kind of stuff I've got on here. Network overview, basically everything that's happening in my network right now, not much. Your CPU usage of uh, the router. Looks fairly calm. And at the bottom here, we get installed wraps. No idea where that is. But the beauty of this, if you don't know what any of this stuff is, you click on the little question mark here, where you can actually launch a tour. And it'll tell you everything about this. So if I launch it right now, basically this is what happens. You get point by point, and it tells you everything about it. And it's very straightforward. And that's what I like about this operating software is if you're like me and it's very very new to you especially the first time I used it uh, this helps you hold your hand all the way through and it even says that help is at hand uh, and every point every section here has got the exact same sort of uh, holding your hand type uh, process and you just click through them all until you come to the end as you see, you can do everything. There we go. And all the way through to the very end. And then it says you're ready to go. And then at the very end, it should say, no, it doesn't say, uh, that you can always go back to pressing this and you can always go back through it again. And you've got support and application categories. That shows you all the kind of Stuff that we're, we're, you'd be interested in uh, in manipulating. If I go into games, it shows you all the games that are that are um, supported right now. And for every section, you've got one of those little um, question marks. So if you go into QoS, this is where most people will uh, get benefit from this router, in my opinion. Because this is where you can allocate where you want the majority of your bandwidth 
to go. So if I just stop the tour, it's very, very simple you can do it. If you want to allocate all your, your bandwidth to gaming, you can literally do 100% if you want. Um, live stream, web file sharing, chat and messages, VPN, VoIP, that's your uh, video calling and all that kind of stuff. You know, you can allocate whatever you want to give. Percentage-wise, like that, you see? And then you can just update it, which takes about a minute to do. And then if you want to put it back, you just reset it. And it goes back to default. Now, the moment I've set this up, I've got uh, gigabit internet at the moment. So that is my speed. I can change that if I want. You do that in your settings. Thought I could maybe change it there, but nope, can't do that. Now, if we go into the other section, which I think most people will benefit, is the traffic controller. Again, very useful. You can add rules for spe specific devices, uh, just allowing for flexible and scheduled blocking and freezing of internet access. That's what I was talking about earlier on. Uh, with traffic controller, traffic can be blocked based on application device or port in accordance to your schedule. For example, parents can traffic controller to easily block all traffic for their children's devices or specifically block gaming and streaming on the computer when it's homework time. So you get that kind of idea. And that's when you can add a rule, rule name, set it up with devices, and everything else and it is rather straightforward although I don't actually have it uh, online at the moment but it is very very easy you've got that that's where you would do that when I was talking about earlier on now the other good thing about this router is the app on your phone so as we can see very straightforward shows you your router you've got device manager shows you everything that's on your network at the moment I don't have much connected to it uh, but that's two things connected to. I can just literally pause it. That's the beauty of this app. If I did, if my kids, that's the iPad mini, Mac mini, iPad, I can literally just click it off and they wouldn't be able to uh, connect onto the internet. Anybody using that, that would be completely blocked off. I love that about this app. Really do. It's very, very handy. Follow up your kids. Go, right, that's it. Boom. No internet. It's brilliant. Uh, you've also got some security which you can, uh, it's an extra add-on, which costs money. You do get so many days free when you buy the router. Uh, you've got an internet speed test, Wi-Fi settings, guest Wi-Fi on and off. You can literally just switch on your guest Wi-Fi on and off, really, really simple, and traffic meter. So if I just go into the, the settings, it's very, very straightforward. You know, I've got 2.4, 5 gigahertz. I've also got smart control. Now, this is something that I probably wouldn't recommend, but you can try it if you like. You can enable Smart Connect for your optimal Wi-Fi speeds on all your devices. I personally don't like that. I like to know I'm on the 5 gigahertz brand or the 2.4 gigahertz brand. And the reason why that is is because a lot of uh, smart devices want you to be on 2.4. And that's the best way. It's my tip. <laughs> Top tip. That way you can just connect to a 2.4 gigahertz band. Really, really simple. Talking of top tips, if you want to get the fastest speeds uh, for using this router, then you have to turn off the security. Security works a little bit like uh, in the way a VPN works, where it can uh, throttle your speed slightly. So when I've got that turned on, I've got gigabit internet. My fastest speed I can get is about 950 normally. That's the fastest I've ever got, 950 normally. Uh, if I turn on that security, it goes down to about 720. So it gives you an idea. It works exactly the same with Wi-Fi. So it does work in the background, and it does take some of your speed off. So if you are worried about getting the full speed, then I would recommend turning that off and then trying it before you go into the internet forums and uh, kick up. Now, the other top tip is regarding the Duma OS dashboard, occasionally it can say it's not connecting. 
and uh, it'll just give you a, a blank screen and say, look, we're trying to connect, make sure you connect to the internet, all that kind of stuff. How to get around that is literally clear, clear your history for the last hour, and it'll work. I don't have no, I have no idea why that is the case, uh, but it is the case all the same. So yeah, if that's if you ever can come up with that uh, problem, then the best way is just to clear your internet history, even if it's just for an hour, and it should work then. And what I'm meaning is when you're trying to put the one nine two one six eight dot one dot one, and you come up with a uh, a problem, it won't connect. So you're offline, that sort of idea. And exactly the same if you are connected and you get a white screen saying, yeah, you're, you're not connected. Little top tip. Top tip. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.